Hello, I'm Tasha and welcome to QB Conservation, your lockdown lowdown on new ecology research. In this series, we challenged biologists at Queen's to tell us about exciting new research in just a few minutes. In today's episode, I'm going to share some of my research into the ecology of the ocean sunfish. Recently, I've been trying to unravel the diet of the ocean sunfishes. So you might ask, why is this matter? And that's a really good question. But until we know more about an animal's life history, it can be really hard to protect it. Now we know that the ocean sunfish has been listed as vulnerable to extinction and hundreds of thousands of these fish are being removed from the world's oceans each year, both in target fisheries for human consumption and as fisheries bycatch. But until we know more about the fish, we won't understand how this removal might affect local ecosystem functioning. So people used to think that ocean sunfish only ate jellyfish, but it seems now that's just part of a much broader diet. So we used an amazing non-invasive way to look at what the fish eat. This involves taking a tiny tissue sample from the fish and then releasing it again unharmed. Whereas traditionally you've had to catch the fish and kill it to see what's inside its guts. But using stable isotope analysis, we can use chemistry to look at the chemical elements that are in the sunfish tissues and then match these to the original prey species. So from these data, we learned that sunfishes have a much more complex diet than previously known. And it seems that smaller sunfish have a much more broad diet. This involves feeding on maybe mollusks, crustaceans, some fish species, and some gelatinous prey, this is your jellyfish. Um, but as they get larger, it seems that more and more of their diet is made up of gelatinous prey species. This shift in diet seems really strong, and it appears that some fish from all over the world might fit this pattern. So how can this help conservation? Well, by understanding an animal's diet, we can then understand how they fit into local ecosystem functioning. So we can say now that if the ocean sunfish removal keeps continuing at this rate, there might be some serious knock-on effects. Also, we can use these data to help inform the sustainable management plans. For example, we're aware now that these smaller sunfishes are targeting prey in nearshore waters, and this might be able to help us build in management plans to help fishermen avoid unwanted bycatch. This is good news for both the sunfish and the fishermen. Overall, I have hope that if studies can continue into the ocean sunfish so we can understand more about their baseline ecology, we will be able to design strong conservation management plans.